And uh, good morning to everyone. Um, I'm glad we were able to bring everybody inside for a few minutes as we celebrate the progression of the dual progress and purpose of East Baton Rouge Parish's Safe Room Training Center. Now, this is a big win uh, for East Baton Rouge Parish, and so I certainly want to acknowledge our fellow mayors, uh, council members, members of PMAC, members of the East Baton Rouge Emergency Medical Services, uh, FEMA, um, the Baton Rouge Fire Department, agency heads, other first responders, and the architect for the project, Lisa Neese with Post Architects for being here today. East Baton Rouge Parish is determined to always be red stick ready. In the face of natural disasters that we often see too often. That's why in coordination with the other municipalities and emergency agencies in our parish, we are building a dedicated facility designed to provide a centralized location where our first responders can safely stage during severe weather events and respond at a moment's notice with the equipment that they need to save lives. The facility, as you will see, is located next to the Mayor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness. It's also located adjacent to the East Baton Rouge Emergency Medical Services Building. And so when complete, the East Baton Rouge Safe Room will provide adequate space and amenities needed for major weather events, as I shared, allowing our first responders to respond quicker and with all the time keeping safety firsthand. Um, the day-to-day -day operation of the facility will serve as the parish's training center, ensuring that all of our public safety personnel will have the resources they need to provide our citizens with first-class public safety. During times of emergency, East Baton Rouge Parish first responder agencies operate as a unified response team. They coordinate through the Mayor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness. So I am delighted to have such a facility in East Baton Rouge Parish that will improve operations, improve efficiency, and emergency response. The Safe Room Training Center is another step in our efforts to support our law enforcement and first responders while also focusing on the overall safety of our residents. I'm very confident that the training center will also boost morale, retention, and recruitment of our public safety personnel rooted in respect and regard for the communities they serve. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our EMS director, Mike Denicola, uh, followed by our fire uh, chief, Michael Kimball. Thank you, Mayor Broom. <clears throat> Thank you again, Mayor Broom. <clears throat> this gives uh, the Department of EMS uh, a proud moment to be partnered with the uh, Mayor's Office of Homeland Security. Baton Rouge Fire Department, East Baton Rouge Parish Fire Departments, uh, Baton Rouge City Police, East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Department, Department of Public Works, and the other city parish departments. Uh, this building will have a capacity of over 700 persons, and uh, it offers opportunity for the city parish departments to have more room to hold bigger classes for public safety classes, continuing education, and the departmental functions, as well as for health and safety classes for the community. Uh, this building also will do, like uh, Mayor Broom said, will be a safe house for public uh, safety uh, workers during uh, catastrophic events. So it's uh, a very proud moment for uh, EMS, East Baton Rouge Parish, Baton Rouge Fire Department, and Mayor's Office of Homeland Security. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor and, and Homeland Security Director Clay Reason, and uh, partner Chief Denicola. This is a huge opportunity for East Baton Rouge Parish and the city of Baton Rouge. During times of disaster, we're able to bring resources in from outside the, the city and the state when the needs arise. We have a location to help house our people that we might need in case of a major event. 
and this is going to bring us leaps and bounds and put us on the on the front of everything to be prepared for these events. So thank y'all. Thank you uh, to our first responders, and of course, uh, Clay. Thank you so much, Clay Reeves, for your leadership at uh, MOSEP. Uh, we'll take any questions that you might have. Of course, here's a rendering of the uh, building right here. And as you can see, construction is underway uh, outside. Any questions? Yes. What, what kind of wind speed is this going to be able to, to withstand? Very good question. I'm going to let some of the specialists right here. Do you want, Lisa, you want to talk about that as the architect? Introduce yourself. As you uh, Good morning, Lisa Mice with Post Architects. Um, this uh, is in compliance with all FEMA requirements for a hurricane shelter. And uh, I should know the exact wind speed it complies with, 210, 205, 250. 250. Um, but it's been a few years since we actually uh, went through the design process. But 250 miles an hour is the, uh, the design wind speed for this facility. Yeah, hopefully you don't need that. Yes, <laughs> that is correct. Hopefully we won't Lisa, need that. Lisa, how do you spell that last name? N-I-C-E. Just like have a nice day. <laughs> what is the, uh, what are the trainings that will take place here? You mentioned training. <laughs> All aspects of public safety from law enforcement, EMS, fire department, uh, USAR, any type of event where we can bring large groups of people together and train at one time. Now we're having to go different locations and train multiple times on the same event. This will allow us to bring people in to host classes at one time to train everybody at the same time. Do you have some examples? Like Anywhere from any type of large medical classes, uh, the technical search rescue stuff that we do. I'm sure if law enforcement has some type of big event they want to train their personnel on, it'll give us a bigger room to accommodate more personnel. Will this, I mean, when we're talking about these trainings, is it just, just for like the city parish, law first responders, or I mean... You know, the Central Police Department, you know, like, I guess the Sheriff's Department, but is this everybody? I mean, what does this kind of entail? This encompasses, this encompasses all the agencies within East Bandage Parish, <clears throat> all law enforcement and public safety. Since it is a parish wide facility and we do uh, collaborate whenever we uh, have a crisis in East Bandage Parish. We all collaborate uh, and meet here at this facility. So, in, Mayor, you know when you say amenities that are going to be <laughs> inside of this building, what is what does that entail? I mean, I'm going to let the uh, architect talk about that a little bit more. Uh, so, as far as the amenities, we ba we basically it is a full service training facility. There are two large rooms that can be subdivided into smaller rooms depending on the need of what's going on, but uh, in, you know, data, AV, all of the uh, necessary components uh, in the floor, walls, and ceiling to be able to have flexibility in terms of the presentation for large and small training uh, conditions. We also have the support spaces required to meet the um, requirements of a uh, FEMA hurricane shelter. Um, that includes food storage, uh, generator backup power, um, trying to think what else. Uh, we've got a breakout area, again, for uh, if training happens to be all day, they have service facilities. We have showers uh, in addition to restrooms, and then your, you know, just regular normal building spaces, mechanical. Um, there is a loading dock to receive, a small loading dock to receive food deliveries and water deliveries, and um, I think that's it. I think that's about it in terms of the, the space. What brought the um, the need for this or the idea for this? What, what spurred this idea? Well, come on, join me, Clay. <laughs> I will tell you that, um, first of all, we were um, fortunate to receive some funding from uh, FEMA. Um, it's a $6.6 .6 million um, uh, parish uh, project, the Safe Room and Training Center. Um, Funded primarily, as I said, with uh, FEMA dollars, 25% uh, matching funds provided by EMS. Um, and it's a, it's a facility that was very much needed for our first responders. Uh, as you heard, uh, both uh, the chief and uh, Director Denicola say um, it is going to be multi-purpose, but 
first and foremost, it'll be a center where our first responders can gather doing um, uh, weather events or any other major crisis that might happen, where oftentimes they don't have that opportunity uh, to have a uh, gathering pl place. And so, you know, we need um, to accommodate uh, our first responders who are there for us all the time during natural disasters. So this will accommodate them. Now Clayton, everyone, you want to add something? I was just going to say, everyone heard the mayor say in her remarks, too, that it's a centralized, safe location mm -hmm. for our first responders during disasters where they can respond at a moment's notice uh, that this is very strategic. So absolutely what the mayor said, geographically where we're located in East Baton Rouge Parish, many times we not only have our own first responders here, but we also house first responders from outside the area. Uh, many times it's the parishes that on the coastline will bring in their first responders here, which is great for us because we have the resources here to respond if, we're need, if needed. Uh, many times, though, as we've seen, uh, fortunately, sometimes we get missed by the, by the weather, the extreme weather, and we send our first responders to, to those areas to assist our neighbors in need. So it's multi-purpose, not only for our first responders, but we would have capacity to have uh, teams. Currently, we look for different locations, which normally we could use for shelter space for, for other needs or for citizens if we need it and take that up. So now our first responders have a central location, uh, which frees up other locations that we have designated for shelter, uh, as well as um, you know having everyone together uh, the, the dual purpose is, is a great uh, use of the building. Uh, as we, if you heard, you know, we have multiple training. We train citizens in, uh, in different aspects of, of, of different disciplines, uh, even down to, you know, our Department of Public Works is very large. They'll have areas now to meet uh, new technologies as they come out. We meet with our IS um, and we meet parish-wide, so it's, it's really a, a, a great opportunity for, for all those functions. And when is construction uh, slated to be completed? A year from now. A year from now? Yes. A year from now, right? A year from now. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, well, thank you all so much. You have one more question? One more. Just to kind of give us a comparison, you know, last September when Ida came mm -hmm. here. I, I guess, what, where were the first responders housed then, and how will this kind of change that? Okay, so last year we, uh, we found some room at the old uh, the mall, uh, I think it's the Boncourt. Bon Carré now, we found some space there. We had a hangar at the airport that we, we housed some first responders. We housed them here in this building, in this particular room. Uh, we had our National Guard uh, here uh, in this room. So it was very limited and, and very confined. So this way, again, we'll have a large area to bring in all those, those, those so agencies. So having to be spread across the parish in different spots. Right. Easier. Correct. All our dignitaries are here. If you have a uh, clarifying question, then I want to get everyone else side for a picture if it's not raining. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.